Family, what's good? Welcome back. It's another one. Smoke Cask and Barrel, I'm Daryl. I'm Randy. And I I would say we have a guest, but I don't really like to say he's a guest because he's definitely a brother of us, a brother of the show. But uh, glad we got him on here for one. Go ahead and introduce yourself, sir. Look, I want to say first. <laughs> I want to say first, <laughs> I'm testing out this stick. Shout out to Craighead, uh, Florida Auto. Uh, it's a good mild stick. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I get this on recording to say this. It's a good mild stick. Shouts out to the makers of Florida Auto. Um, it's an easy, it's a good intro stick. Um, it's a, it's got a clean finish. Uh, I haven't been smoking long, but I know what I like. I was going to say, we'll get into that, man. Yeah. Introduce yourself to people. Oh, yeah, but, but I wasn't sure I said, shout out to Craig. Yeah, I wanted to say that. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. But my name is Bashiri Asad. I, I'm a singer, songwriter, and an entertainer here based out of Indianapolis. And he's he's a Naptown goat, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, definitely, like I, I said, you should that. recognize him. Um, he's definitely, uh, like I said, I, not even a guest, it's just a brother of the show. Definitely, we have done, we'll continue to do a lot of things that involve him. Um, Soul Singer Supreme All that good stuff So uh, we've had some legendary shows At the Cosmo Night Social Club uh, <laughs> We've had some legendary shows here uh, We got something else coming I ain't gonna let it out the bag just yet But it's coming yep. um, That being said So he just gave you his whole spiel <laughs> On his cigar he jumped the gun. <laughs> yo, I do that. yo I mean I, I, I can talk about it even more The more I get into it Especially with what we're going to be tasting today. So, look, so, <laughs> I just wanted to shout that out. Go look it out, Craig. Yeah. So, Florida Oral, that's actually, I don't know if it's a local brand here as far as the cigar maker itself. Um, but, uh, like you said, he gave you that. I'm smoking a Leaf by Oscar, Connecticut. Actually smoking a mild cigar. Um, Leaf by, uh, I forgot the match on this, but this, I think, is all Connecticut. Um, very mild got a good look on it, 6x60. Six um, I thought it'd just be fitting, especially for what it is that we're going to be tasting and pairing up. And then, uh, what you got, Randy? I got an Avo Classic number three, Churchill size. So, I mean, Ecuadorian rapper, Dominican filler, Dominican. Yeah. Pretty much. So, so we all smoking mild today. Yeah, we're keeping it easy. We all keeping it easy. Um, so, you said, now, I want to go back to Bashiri since he already uh -huh. started us. Um, you said you just just got really just got more just really recently got into cigars. I did. I um, I came out here uh, a couple years ago to uh, check out a matinee, and you know I'd had a cigar. I, it wasn't something I you know known much about, but as I came out here and hung out more, beginning of last year, uh, right at the onset of things getting really crazy. Uh, I started hanging out with Bledsoe and I started to learn about cigars and I started and it was basically you find what you like and I was referred to certain ones I, you know um, I still Softer like my ladies side, the sweeter side yeah so, the sweeter yeah. side stuff you know I like my ladies uh, my Alice's <laughs> and my Betty's and, and, and those as Randy calls them the business niches. <laughs> I love <laughs> them I love them um, a Java's a good morning cigar. Like you could have that with a cup, a cup of coffee. Absolutely, literally, it's literally it really a breakfast cigar. Um, but my favorite right now might be the Macanudo. Macanudo, okay. Yeah. Okay. I really like the Macanudo. I mean, but I'm I'm still learning. There are others that you know that I've had, but right now the Macanudo is, is is my go-to, and I like the Alley as well. You know, mild cigars are often more times are harder to make because one thing about people who smoke the mild cigars on a consistent basis, they're smoking it because they want a particular taste. And to be able to deliver that all the time, yes. every stick, every time. So it's a little bit more delicate as far as uh, making it. Um, Truthfully, they have a little more flavor in them when they're consistent. Like they actually that, do. So yeah. They actually do. They actually do. They have a lot more flavor in them. So... Um, Bashiri, so maybe what, last year? Yep. Last year. How long have you been smoking cigar? I don't think we ever talked about How long have you been smoking, Randy? I've been smoking for about uh, roughly 10 years or so. See, I'm in good company. Yeah. Uh, but see, when I <laughs> first started smoking, it was probably one every couple months or so. So, I mean, the first couple of years, especially before he actually took over this establishment, 
I was probably, mm, you know, cigar here and there, like fly by night until I actually really started smoking every day, majority of the day. So it's been a been an odd transition. See, now you got me here. It's like I'm like the old veteran because I've been smoking cigars now almost 20 years. Yes, sir. Almost 20 years. Um, I used to smoke like one cigar a year. And then because of my background, shout out to those who know, I used to used to be a closeted cigar smoker. <laughs> <laughs> I never let nobody know I would smoke cigars because I was always worried about, you know, people's opinions and stuff. Now I don't give a shit. But anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You ain't got to walk around with this. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, but no, um, so I, I would say, you know, like I said, close to 20 years I've been smoking cigars. Um, and for me, like I said, I don't know, maybe we can talk about that a little bit while we're talking this cigar talk. What is it for you? Bashir, you get into a year. Randy, you got 10 years. You got some time in. But what is it uh, about cigar smoking for you, Bashir, that, that's like, you were enjoying what are you enjoying about it i guess it's just like, it's it's the alchemy with the uh use my knife grade words there you go it's the alchemy <laughs> it's 20 dollar word. Right, right right uh the the combination and finding the right combination to go with your pour. um before you know like igni any other ignoramus another 20 dollar word there you go um, <laughs> you pull it on it and you pull it on it like it's weed okay you can't do that you'll kill yourself you don't, you don't, you don't do that um when that's actually to, good info, though. They yeah. say that. That's I mean, actually good info. For because that. most I, people don't know how they don't. They truly don't know that, cigar, Randy. So yeah. And like when I brought people in here, I usually bring them in here. I don't know if you noticed this, and I usually leave them. Yeah. 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 But I leave them on purpose because they need to learn how to do what it is that I'm bringing them to do, and they appreciate it so much because they're getting education. Shouts out to the Cosmo. Um, Absolutely. But it's it's the alchemy. Uh, it's it's. It's the smell. It's the taste of a good of a good stick and a good pour together. Okay. It's everything with it, man. It just became a part of what I enjoy, man. So I, I yeah, it was easy. What about you, Randy? Man, it's all about it's a relaxation. Factor. Man, oh man. It, it's like you once I actually have a cigar and a decent pour, it's like I whitewash that whole day away. You yeah. Know what I mean, so it's yeah. the relaxation factor. Plus, I mean, I do like the. the a little high I get Come on. when smoking a decent cigar. Yeah. So, yeah. so instead of having to actually do illegal drugs, I mean, hey. Same thing for me is, I mean, there's nothing like it to get that hour, two hours to just wash away your day, um, strategize for the next, um, so on and so forth. I mean, great conversations. I'm, I'm, I'm always a proponent of saying, you know, the world's issues can be solved over a good cigar and a good drink Come on, and a good pour. So. Um, yeah, and that's the same thing for me, you know, and I think for everyone, as you can see, you know, as we get into cigars, the more you smoke, you always find different lifestyles, different mindsets and things around it. Um, I know people who do smoke cigars for, you know, it kind of gives them that high, that buzz, that euphoric uh, experience for a second. And that's cool. Um, and there's some people who are really getting into it. Like I always consider it a lifestyle, as we always say, we always right. consider it a lifestyle, um, a luxury hobby. So it's, it's, you know, yeah, I enjoy it. And uh, yeah, it's here to stay. Come on now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that being said, um, oh, let me come back. This is Honduran. I was going to mess it up. It's Honduran tobacco for the Connecticut, for the Leaf by Oscar. Honduran tobacco. So um, that being said, um, this is kind of a... Um, unique uh whiskey episode with what we have with our cigars because this is a japanese invasion i'll just call it that way um japanese whiskey if you know anything especially for myself for randy uh we're getting uh Bashiri this yeah, they experience are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> but if you know anything about us you know japanese whiskey for us is hands down a favorite like it's, it's it's up there. It's up there. It's definitely up there. Love my bourbons. Yes. You know, love my scotches. Love my American whiskeys and things. But Japanese whiskey for me is always like one of those things. Like it does so many things so well. Yeah. Yes. Like you can definitely. capture all. You get your scotch flavors, so on and so forth. You get your, you, you just get the whole experience with yeah. it. Majority of the time, it's a lot of complexity there that you really don't get with traditional 
bourbons and whiskey. So, I mean, you, you, you find more flavors, let's say. Yeah. And, you know, the best part about it is that pairing it with a mild, the mild is an, is, is an excellent complement to a Japanese whiskey because of uh, all the yeah. complexities yeah. that come with the different types of Japanese whiskeys. And I'm, I'm sure we're going to get into these three that we have here because there are levels yeah. to what's on this bar top right here <laughs> but see right. what you saying that though so when you do have a mild cigar so most japanese whiskey start off to be strictly like sanitized and clean so that everything is supposed to be pure tasting you, you're supposed to get the the raw finish of that spirit yeah mm -hmm. so i mean with a mild cigar you can't overwhelm yourself with it i mean they they should traditionally complement each other and while we're saying that, make sure you like, comment, subscribe on the video, Smoke Cask and Barrel on YouTube, Smoke Cask and Barrel on Facebook, Smoke Cask and Barrel on Instagram. And tell yeah. a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a hater to <laughs> subscribe, hit the like button, follow this podcast, follow them on IG. They're also promoting all of the events that are going on here at the Cosmo as well. So keep and we got some player game. events, just in my opinion, but, yeah. you know, you got to be a part to experience that, you know, so. So we have in front of us Shibui, and then we have Nika Whiskey from the Barrel. Now, I know the whiskey, Nika, from, uh, Nika Whiskey from the Barrel is a wild card, but we just wanted to talk about some Japanese whiskey. So I think these are a couple of three offerings of premier uh, Japanese whiskey, Japanese spirits. Um, I'm gonna shut up and let Randy do his thing because Shibuya is definitely the um, wheelhouse. <laughs> the wheelhouse of that, but it's it's honestly it's a newer it's a newer name to me. Um, I'm real familiar, you know, uh, with the Nika and, and Suntory as far as the Hibikis and different things with that. What was that other one you had me uh, testing? Over the weekend, Nabushu. 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 Yeah. That was delicious. Actually, ain't none of that left. That we done drank it all yeah, up. <laughs> that one's gone. That bottle yeah. left. Yeah. In that about was delicious. Two days, Thank you. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, we got the Shibui. This is the like grain. 86 grain. 86, okay, 86 grain. Select here. And you can see the color in that. So, very, 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 very light. Almost very light. like a uh, light Almost honey like color. Almost like Suntory, the Toki. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. It puts you in that same state of mind. Okay. And then we have the pure malt, Shibui pure malt. It's very distinct. Very distinct, different taste. You can see it's a little darker, almost an amber. That finish on that. And then we have the Nika whiskey from the barrel, which is about that same color, a little darker. Um, both of these two Shibuis are 86 proof. This is 101 or 102. I think 102 because they're 51 percent alcohol, so 102 proof. So I'm gonna shut up. Randy, what we got here with the Shibuis, <laughs> and we're going to start so, and with tasting the Shibuis. So the first one is actually a weeded whiskey scotch blend. Okay. You can't tell it's truly weeded because of the color. Right. So, and they're all, they're both done in the same barrel of cast after finishing or whatever. So, but with the pure malt, it's strictly 100% pure malt. And you will distinguish the taste behind that. So... One thing also I was going to say, and you can probably speak to it some more, Japanese whiskeys. So in America, there's a rule that you cannot reuse barrels once you age bourbons and things and already things like that. But those barrels are actually a piece of economy for a lot of these. And we talked about it in the last episode with Kevin. Shouts out to him being Suntory. D Brown, shouts yeah. out to you too, sir. Get well. Um, so but, with these, they have been purchased. So these okay. are old barrels that they're actually aged. So a lot of those barrels from like your Maker's Mark, yeah. uh, Buffalo Trace, some of them, they're all getting sent overseas to Japanese. So the so first when one, they're done using them. When they're done using them, because in America, the, the law, the law is they can only use it one time. That's amazing. So they, <laughs> <laughs> as a part of the economy for their company, real, they real. sell those barrels over. Mm -hmm. So we got the, uh, what's it, the grain, so what's it, the 86 grain? The 86 grain. 86 grain in front of us now. So, uh, this don't have a lot of nose to it though. No, it no. doesn't. This Actually, it's, it's, that, it's, very, it's not really complex, though, so it, the, the actual tasting behind it is very light, very airy. You get just a nip of actual scotch taste behind it, but I mean, it's, it's depending on what you're smoking or what you act previously drank, you're not going to get a whole lot behind this. It's just really stringent on the nose. I think I that's about the big... The nose feel on this, and you feel yeah. it after... 
And after see, for me, it down. does not have a nose at all. Yeah, it's just a strange, like it just, like, I don't know, I guess it's the alcohol or whatever. I don't know. That's, what, it's I, like, that's what I get. That's it's just really strange. And it might, it might be the combination with the sticks as well. But it, it's, uh, it's uh, the alcohol. But it is a light on the, on the palate. Yes. Um, I get some peat. A little bit of peat, a little yeah, of that scotch a, peat towards the back of it. Bit. And see, yeah. so they don't disclose on the mash bill how much of it is actual scotch, how much of it is actual whiskey. So, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it's probably not a 50-50 split because no. if it was, you'd have a little more peatiness behind it. Then keep it safe. Keep it safe for everybody. Yeah. You know what? This is almost like a cocktail whiskey, I would think, though. See, yeah, I wouldn't know much about that. Uh, Randy hey, he, 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 I wouldn't go for Cuban links. He, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't do that. He infamously it. does not like cocktails. Um, I could see this this particular one being like a, a nice highball. Um, it's not smoky enough for anything to do like an old fashioned with it. With that. No, I guess that not highball. Maybe some. I don't even know. Maybe even a, a mule, Japanese version of a mule, maybe, but. Yeah, a ginger beer with it, yeah. It wouldn't drown it. No. It wouldn't hurt. Um, what's the price point of that bottle, Randy? On price the, point on that bottle is right about fifty bucks. Fifty bucks? Yeah. Um, this is not on allocation, correct? No, it's not. It's not you should be able to find this anywhere and everywhere. Okay. Um, this is not on allocation. So yeah, I think it's you know, hey. Yeah. Summertime <laughs> whiskey, you know, if it's ninety yeah, degrees it's, outside, it's something, it's nice it's something different weather. though. Yeah. It's something different. So yeah. if you always go for that one bottle, I mean, this is a bottle you could actually pull off the shelf and be like, "Hey, I'm in for, I'm in for something, something a different. different mood." Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it, you know what? To that point, I can see this being a good everyday drinker for that reason. Like, like it's, it's not not gonna knock. You know what I mean? It's not over yeah, the it's top. Not gonna... This ain't a weekend bottle. This could be something like through the week. Just want to get some whiskey in. But you can get lost in the bottle because after mm -hmm. the first it's two easy. or so, it, hey, they all start to taste a little bit better. Yeah, <laughs> we call those crushable bottles, and that's when you start getting in trouble. Because next thing you know, how did it get down to the end? <laughs> and you, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, what's your grade? Give me your honest grade. We're we grading on a one or, or it's a, a you said What's the price point? It's about 50 bucks. 50 bucks? Yeah, on letters. We're going to use the letters. Um, I would give it a strong C, maybe even, I would give it a strong C plus. Okay. I think, I think if you're looking to get into Japanese whiskey and you want something that's safe on the price point for the everyday uh, whiskey consumer, and you're wanting to get into something different other than the Kentucky bourbons and the, and the American whiskeys and things like that. You want to change the pace that's going to be safe for everybody. You want a good introduction. I think this is a good introduction to Japanese whiskey. I like that. I would say a C. Yeah. I would say a C good too. Good strong, like a C. Good strong, yeah, good C, yeah. C yeah. Plus. Good C. Yeah. I think the ladies will like it. Okay, for me it's a B minus because I've been drinking it a little bit longer than they have and I've, I've actually... <laughs> no, I mean, that's, 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 yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. I've actually got history with these bottles so is that something we, as we get into other ones but is that something you would probably more prefer and you know with me it's japanese whiskey it's, speaking that way yeah it's just i like different stuff okay because I, I don't fair. like the same thing i don't i like to fall into routines i'm yeah, not a yeah. creature of habit or yeah. anything so i i never reach for the same bottle all the time you know what i mean mm -hmm. so it's like for me it's it's a turn of events it's like hey let's go this route today mm -hmm. okay yeah. All right. So that's the 86 grain. 50 bucks. Readily available. Not on allocation. Yeah. Shibui. Um, like I said, for me, it's a C. And I'm not saying because it's disgusting. Because it's not disgusting. It's it's tasty. It's tasty. Like I said, you can get lost. In. I can see that being that case. But, I mean, with generally with Japanese whiskeys, a lot of people don't like a lot of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's you have to find some that you gravitate They're to. so good. Oh, man, because I'm, I'm considering getting one. Like, yeah. I think. It's so good, though. Yeah. I That's, guess I'll come back to the more I drink of it, I'll probably have to raise my grade. I, mean, I don't the, know. The more, the more we don't get to the bottom of these sisters here. Hey. And yes, this is a smoke cask and barrel whiskey glass. I know the nose and glass. We may have some available. Yeah, I was great. We may have a limited, I mean, a very, very, very limited amount of them. But, uh, okay, here's so we got the next one. Shibui Pure Malt. It's the Pure Malt Whiskey. Shibui, what's the price point on this? That's about 80 bucks. Okay, what's the, what's the, 
backgrounds the same match bill what's uh, that that one's 100 percent mod so from okay. what i've researched prior to they've actually just changed their match bills because these used to be made out of actual japanese rice okay. and so now when i look at them that like i said that one says weeded and that one says pure malt, 100%. But I'm wondering how much of the rice actually still goes in it because it was two blends of rice. One of it was a, a indica, and I only remember that because of indica. Indica. <laughs> hey. As soon as you said it, my eyebrow went up like Yeah, but the other one is called, it's like a ko, koji or something like that, and it's a Korean rice, okay. basically, So, which is not truly Japanese, but hey. But rice and rice and mash bills, because it's happening a lot actually with a lot of the bourbons and American whiskeys as well, getting rice into the mash bill, it brings on a different flavor, a different profile with a lot of things. Um, sometimes they can tend to be a little bit more nuttier. Um, I'm going to say they're depends. more receptible to the, the, the rye. I mean, the... Uh, the uh, rice the rice malt is it is it a little more susceptible to the the alcohol uh intake or the, the alcohol that goes into it because of the rice yeah, i wouldn't that. know but it, that's a good coin a question though because like with sake it, it's a hundred percent rice, rice wine, yeah. Yeah. yeah so rice i mean wine, yeah. and it the alcohol sake gets you in trouble man <laughs> and yeah. enormous at times yeah. so you know hey that that's a good i have to do a little research behind i like that, this man i, I want to figure that one out I'm not a big fan of um, malts, but I was introduced to a couple of, uh, to, to malt, everything, all good things malt while I've been here. But and saying with the malt, it's not overwhelming. No, it's like, it's not, it, it's and it so. says it's a hundred percent, but hey, you know, and then with this one, I don't get a lot of the scotch taste. Now on the nose, for me, it's a strong, like walnut, peanuts, almost like a, like a, um, like a not honey roasted, but just a real dark roasted peanut. Like and it I hits get on that. Contact. Yeah, and I get a little bit of that scotch. Man, as far as the peat on the nose, anyway, I get a little bit of that scotch finish on the nose. So let me ask you this: since y'all been sipping though, do you get a hug? No, because there is no hug. No, for me. no, no. no. And that's what makes these dangerous. That's I was going to say. <laughs> so that's so that's so. And this is maybe this is in my limited stuff, but. Every time I've had a Japanese whiskey, it's so clean. No matter the variation, it's so clean. Thus, they keep saying they will get you in trouble. You'll find yourself at the bottom sitting with your people at the bottom of these because That's they're so clean. That's a perfect description. And That's what, he was saying, description. what he was saying about the hug, no, there isn't. There's no warning. There's no... See, and that's why I say no, you how you doing? lost hey, I'm here. these. After two or three, you realize, hey... Might as well have two or three more. Yeah, I've not more. gotten where I needed to be. Yep. So you yep. look up, you finish the bottle, and you got to stumble off to your bed. To get, back to, get back to where you need to get. <laughs> so I get, like I said, I get the, I get the walnuts mm -hmm. on the palate, but I also get a little bit of the fruit. Not a whole lot. I get a little bit of like, like dates, maybe it's, raisiny a little bit, something like high. that. I, I, yeah. And so off their website, they actually say you should get walnuts, uh, raisins, and uh, a couple of other dry fruits. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah it's like, you get the echoes uh, initially after it dissipates. You yeah. Know, yeah. Other, other, yeah. Other and that's the thing about it. It's got a flavorful linger to it. Now, I was going to real quick, how is it going with your cigars? These first two have gone with your cigars. How are they doing with your cigars? These are perfect. These are, these are perfect. The these first perfect. one, the first variation of the Shibuya. Uh, like I said, it has it has a bit of a nose feel, but as you drink it, you don't have it. Right, right. With this, it is very, very flavorful. The, the rye is very, very flavorful. It's um, you have to be a fan of rye first and foremost uh, to appreciate it. Now, some some rye are some are some are very overpowering depending on the variations of whiskey, whether it be a Kentucky or any of the other variations of whiskey, but. This here, I mean, it's deceptively. That's what it is. That's that Mizanora Oh, That's what that Mizanora But see, both of them are done in Mizanora. Okay. Also. That's what I'm getting. So, in the other one, I always mess now up. Now, this. Or or whatever. Oh, yeah. Y'all yeah. uh, know we I'm, jack up names on here. Hey, bro. Up, hey, so. I'm sorry. Leave lead, lead, lead the true names in, in the comments if yeah. we jack it up. Please. <laughs> um, forgive us. This for is the actually, this pure malt is going with this cigar. Like, it's, it's perfect. Like it's a perfect, perfect, perfect pairing. Yeah. Um, with this, it's um, it's 
it almost takes away the walnut. You know what I mean? Like I'm getting that burnt. I was but, getting some like a burnt walnut, but it's just that burnt peanut, but it's taking it away just enough to make it just like. So, so now we on roast instead of burnt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll be back with that bottle. Yeah. So how much was this one? 80 bucks. 80 bucks. Not on allocation? Not on allocation. You should be able to find it. Okay. Grades. Oh, no. That's a, uh, that's a B. Um, I have to be in the mood to drink it. But if I sit and I start with it, I got a partner coming up next weekend. And he's never had Japanese whiskey. Oh, we gotta change uh, that. Yeah, we can change that. Oh, no, no, no. That. Yeah, he's from Youngstown. Shouts out to my man Josh. You gotta I change told that. He's coming down here, so. Yeah, we gotta change uh, that. We're gonna get him change. together, but um, this would be something I would introduce him to. Um, I would also introduce him to the original Shibuya, but I think this one right here will go with what he smokes. He's a. Uh, he's, uh, he, he's not much of a mild smoker. Though. Okay. You know, I'm gonna go B. Plus. So yeah, I'm at a B plus, almost an A. Honestly, I mean, this yeah. is uh, yeah. I'll just go ahead and say A. I'm gonna say A. I said um, I left my A for the last one. I'm gonna say A. <laughs> I was already ready. Well, See, I, I'm a B plus on this. I'm a B one. plus, well. almost an A. And I, I actually say I cracked say this on bottle this. yesterday and started drinking it. Oh, okay. So, and that's why I was telling Bless so before. I was like, hey, I went in, reached, and this was the first thing I grabbed. Very, very good. Yeah, the more I spend with, I, I really, yeah, that one's okay. Yes, sir. All right, pray for our livers. Um, <laughs> last on, one, <laughs> <laughs> last one is Nika whiskey from the barrel. Um, this is actually, uh, like I said, 102 proof, 100, 102 proof. This is uh, a marriage of two Japanese whiskeys of single malts and as well as uh, grains. Um, but if you know anything about Nika, they have Yochi, single malt Yochi, and they have a Mi Q, Mega Q, I think it is, something like that. But that's this is a marriage of both of those. Um, they sit and they finish this together. This particular bottle, personally, just a personal testimony, I have been seeking this bottle out for like three or four years, trying to get a hold of this bottle, and I end up running like a case of it, <laughs> and right I on drink. Time. Well, the the problem is I guzzled probably like six, seven miles of this with my people and everything. But this, um, when you start talking Japanese whiskey, like I said, I know. That's one of my favorites. That's you a favorite. I mean. Yeah, I, I bought bottles uh, down here to Cosmos and actually gave away for oh tasting. Man, so, is yeah. man. so that is one of my favorites. And that's not a really easy bottle to find. It's not. It's not. So when you see them, grab them. Grab them. It's about 70 to 75 bucks it could be 80 depending on which market you buy it in or it could be 90. it could be 90. Mm -hmm. i was going to say right now i believe in indy i've been able to see shouts out to our people we're going to talk about our title sponsor community spirits i believe they have this in now um i've been seeing about the 75 80 buck range okay. for this one um like i said when you see it snatch it up i promise you it's one that you would want on your bar um, it's it's a go-to. What's, what's, what's your notes on this? Y'all have already been into it. I can talk about this one all day long myself personally, but nose-wise, I get a lot of the fruits, like the pears, dates, kind of that thing like that. Yeah, I mean, this one is really fruity with yeah. just a, a slight dash of, like, oakiness behind mm -hmm. it, but uh, it's not really prevalent. I mean, yep. you, you'll get it on every time you nose it, but it's there. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good mix. Uh, the the oakiness is not overpowering. It's it's a, actually a, a very very high after. I say I'm not even sure what what barrels that's actually aged in. And I try. I've been trying to find it. And one thing I've discovered with Japanese whiskey, and I think Randy attested this too. They don't disclose. They don't the disclose body. their mash bills. Yeah, they, don't <laughs> they don't really the put their mash bills out there. It's probably what it is. Like you may find. Sly sons of bitches. Hey, bro. <laughs> Man. Cheers to you. But um, on the palate, like I said, mm -hmm. that was a perfect description, what you said, though, with Japanese whiskey. It's so clean, mm -hmm. real crisp, clean. Get your fruits, your pears, like I said, your dates, uh, figs. I mean, it's just an explosion of dried fruit. It's so good, though. But see, and that's the crazy thing behind Japanese whiskey and the Kentucky or Tennessee. I mean, 
it's it's clean to where it doesn't leave a whole lot on your tongue. Mm-hmm. Whereas when you got Kentucky bourbons or whiskeys or whatever, you know you've been you drinking. You know you've been yeah, drinking. Exactly. You know you've been drinking. Because it gets in your palate, just coat your whole palate. Exactly. And just take all that over. Yes. Yeah. Like I said, about, about 75 bucks. It's Don't ask me my grade. It's an A plus in my book. Yeah, that's actually a go-to. Besides the Nika coffee grain. Oh, another good one. I choose them every time I see them. So. <laughs> Nika coffee grain, single malt Yochi, the pure malt Nika. Nika, for me, is always come down between Nika and Suntory. And actually, I believe at one point, the master blender for Nika and the master blender for Suntory were actually partners at one point. And Nika was birthed as they split apart, and he wanted to do his own thing and went on to do it. No beef or nothing like that, but he went to do his own thing, and we got Nika whiskey, Japanese whiskey, which they don't miss, in my opinion. They just don't miss. This is delicious. Um, What's your great? What's your great? You got a strong A plus, Doc. I mean, for Japanese whiskeys, I mean, it's it's the, it's the perfect mix. Yeah. And say, so the, the scary two. thing about that one though is the proof. What is it? It's 102. It's a 51 percent. Let me see. Yeah, 51.4 percent. So this is a 102. And, and you don't rich find color on that there too. Yeah, but. but you don't find many Japanese whiskeys mm. at 100 proof. At proof at all, period. So yeah. You don't. Japanese whiskeys are always sim- like uh, we're big fans of the Habiki mm-hmm. Suntory Habiki mm-hmm. Harmony. That's an 86 proof. Most of them are 86 proofers. There's some a couple of them eight year, eight, 15 years that are 86 proofers. Um, and that don't get over 92. No, no, not like that. No, they're not big high proof uh, whiskeys. And that's one thing. Drink more. Well, I'm gonna say, <laughs> and that's one thing unique to Japanese whiskey that it is not. It's it's made to be. It's more pride in the drinking yeah. and the complexity yeah. behind the actual tasting. Yeah, that, that that's what they're looking it's for. They they piece. don't care about the proof. Yeah, and yeah. that's why we love them so much because they just do so many things so well. Like if you want a Scotch experience bourbon whiskey all that you can kind of get all of this just married and it's real clean it's real crisp it's so good but seeing uh, this is a good starter for scotches anyway yes. so if you actually don't like scotches you can drink a bunch of japanese whiskeys that'll turn you on to some different scotch. we gotta do some scotch episodes because we got some we got some yeah y'all know how we do we got some stuff man <laughs> that needs to be brought out and, and it's getting to be cold outside about. it's, it's getting cold out hey uh, yeah, it's definitely. scotch and big bourbon season Come right on. now and speaking of bourbon hunting season again if you see this grab it grab it up it's a great 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 whiskey um my wife actually likes japanese whiskey and she don't drink bourbons or none of that stuff really because it's too much for her but this is something she likes so i think but then when you tell them to grab it don't just grab it and sit it on your shelf to say you got it no yeah drink it drink your bottles please experience (laughs) experience stop wasting these things Every day is a special occasion that you wake up and put both feet on the ground and move from your day. That's a that's a great occasion. Okay, word, word. so celebrate that. Um, which you said A plus, which are great. I'm an A plus all day. A plus all day. Yeah. I mean, like I said, we'll get lost in this after this is all cut off. Um, <laughs> but either way it go, Japanese invasion. Some great whiskeys here. Um, we, like I said, we've talked about some other ones. Now, Randy got some of the, the goat bottles in the Japanese whiskey world. I think he got some of those age stated. That's one thing, like I said, traditionally, if you look at most Japanese whiskeys, I think uh, Hibiki's the only one I've really seen with corks. I ain't gonna say it's the only one. Yeah, it's not the only one, but they but traditionally- Are all screw tops. tops. Yeah, They're all yeah. screw tops. You notice all of them are screw tops. Um, but you know there was some legislation and kevin talked to that a little bit about that in our last in the episode last episode so if you didn't watch the last episode go back and watch the last episode. get the information um and how that 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 frontier is changing with japanese whiskey as far as uh rules and regulations with that because right now even for bourbon american whiskey and thing you have a lot of counterfeiting going on and people are calling themselves to be something that they're really not so there's a lot of regulations and things going on. As much as the, like, the Shibuis are not on allocation, you know, the price points can get up there a little bit, but these are something that you want to go ahead and get now that you have the chance to get it because I can guarantee you maybe in the next six months to a year, I, know, I think Kevin was kind of in and out on it, but yeah. it, the prices may go up. Oh. 
most definitely. And they after, will get harder so to obtain. So after the pure amount, the price jumps to a hundred and twenty to one hundred thirty dollars, and then it it goes up to the thousand. So like these are the two offerings that are under a hundred bucks. Nothing else they make is less than a hundred bucks. And I can tell you right now, on this one, the Nika whiskey from the barrel to market with that, this can easily shoot to 100 bucks. It could double, by the end it, 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 it could can double it depending yeah. on where you go. It can shoot there real quick. Um, Yamato, a lot of these other Japanese whiskeys, the price points on these are getting up there. They're getting there to your 150 or $200 a bottle. And honestly, just in general whiskey, and I'm going to say this, and we can probably talk about this real quick. Um, the Prices whiskeys are, are starting up. to going up. Yeah. A hundred bucks is a standard price anymore now for mm. a good for a good a decent, bottle. Yeah. yeah Especially if almost. you're going with single barrels, cash strength, yeah. Anything that's kind of special, like hey, you're gonna pay a hundred bucks or better. So it's gonna go up. Um that being said, wanna shout out our family community spirits, Charles Everhart, the whole team, A D, C J. We appreciate y'all so much for what you do. I greatly appreciate you personally, <laughs> but I know we appreciate you for all what you've done. Glad to come see y'all, yeah. And thank you for believing in what it is that we're doing. Um, I'm telling you now, if you have not been shopping with Community Spirits, Eagle Creek Liquors, Mr. B's Liquor Shack, you're missing out. What is it, September now? We're great being October, Lord willing, here in the next couple weeks. And it's winding up the bourbon show time. And I'm trying to tell you right now, those invitations are not to everybody. You want to be able to get a hold of some of those rare bottles in this bourbon hunting season spend your money okay spend your money support show up tell them we sent you tell them we just smoke cast tell them we sent you over there go spend and get a hold of some of these bottles charles has been doing a thing here putting a lot of these uh allocated bottles just been dropping them out here and there periodically and stuff like that so you've been able to get all of some things like that so make sure you're shopping with them and we always want to shout out our brother Prime 357 Cigars, Dwayne Jarrett. DJ. He's killing the game right now with that. Again, he's not a cigar brand. He is a cigar retailer, wholesaler. Make sure you link up with him. Best prices in the state. He's the push. I will argue. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I see him to get my fix. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm going to see him sometime this week. What's going on, D? Hey, make sure you're shopping with that. 357. Um, like I said, Smoke Cask and Brill is all about doing our part to push the culture forward. We got our brother here, I say a family, Bashiri, uh, have done some amazing shows here at the Cosmo Night Social Club. We got some other stuff coming with you. I'm trying to tell you right hey, now. Why are you sitting there? I know you've been smoking or whatever. Give him a little snippet of what you do. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. Just a little snippet. That's all. Just I've a little snippet. Drinking. You've been drinking. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna put on the spot. We're gonna put but on I will spot. tell you, I will tell you this: anytime they do some live events or live music events down here at the Cosmo, it is definitely a move. So make sure you come down here. You want a great smoking establishment where you can get you a good stick and a good pour. Here's some live entertainment. Come on down here to the Cosmo. Do we have any projects we need to support, bro? I mean, I got a live project that I'm getting ready to record I, uh -oh. have a, I have a recording session coming up in november uh, -oh. uh that i'll be doing called the everyday soul singer sessions and okay. that'll be available in january but the the actual recording session is in november the first week in november so um once, you heard once it I here time, first yes oh yeah i hadn't, I hadn't even said anything <laughs> um but it it'll be with some some great musicians and we'll be recording over at listen here on the south side of indianapolis nice uh, shouts out to big car and shouts out to the crew over at listen here uh wqrt radio and uh we'll also be doing some video recordings of those recording sessions by the same video director who did 38th and post postmortem for uh, a premium blend oh really yeah. okay yeah that's a uh, terra vice uh, should be doing the uh, video work for that so yeah i just kind of let all the cats out the back for that so it, it should be a good ep it should be a good ep hey yeah. be on heard the it here out. be on the lookout for it Grown folk music. Smoke cask and bro, we about pushing the culture forward. Soul music. Yeah. We're doing a rendition Soul of Whip music. Appeal. Uh, we're recording a rendition of Whip oh, Appeal. Oh, no, no. You can't say that. Hey, hey, hey. I'm hey, just going to hey, put it hey, out man. there. That's hold all, on, all, no, that's, that's on, all I'm putting wait, out there. Wait, we're gonna, we, we have a whole new. It's like it's like, it's like like a um, There's a couple of remixes that we're doing some rearrangements. So this is what happens when you have me drinking. I start talking about shit. Um, <laughs> but we're going to do some uh, live uh, renditions of a couple of songs and a couple of uh, new original compositions as well. So, yeah. Whoop Appeal is one of those. Bashir side, 
make sure you get on there all your digital outlets he's there hey that's the team i'm trying to tell you right now we, it is it's something happening <laughs> i'm trying to tell you something <laughs> happening <over here. laughs> hey get down with us come on period um but it's all about i love it black excellence black excellence so that being said thank you again make sure you share this like comment subscribe uh cosmo we got some stuff coming up with that got a bunch of events coming up mm -hmm. i got my head in a uh whirlwind right yeah smoke cask and brill will be doing the halloween edition of our sip and smoke day party october 31st the tickets will go live on october 1st so there you go don't get mad if you don't get the ticket get the come ticket kick it with us <laughs> come just, kick it with us just come kick it with your boy kick it with your people if you don't know how our day parties go down ask somebody about it <laughs> it is legendary stuff but we're all doing what we can to try to afford the culture so big shouts out to all the influencers, everybody who's moving in this Forgot community. To tell them though, we'll, they will be sampling that day. So they'll be sampling that day. Um, the headline sampling will be Russell's Reserve Ten Year, and then we have some. You know, we got. It ain't gonna be like the cigar weekend. We ain't gonna go that crazy. Damn. We got, we got, we got, we got some stuff though. We got yeah, some we stuff. We got some stuff. We got some you. stuff for hey, you. Hey, I'm gonna say this one more time. As someone that was here for Cigar Weekend, this was not scripted. I did not come on the air and say I was going to say anything about Cigar Weekend. Cigar Weekend was a movie, y'all. Oh, my God. That was crazy. And it, it was a movie because Indy needed this. Cosmo was ready for this and set it out for everybody. And the team did everything right. Even the things that weren't perfect, those things were perfectly done for that weekend. And... When it happens next year, please make sure you're here. Don't be one of those people that watch these kind of these, these podcasts and then wonder why we're talking about it and you wasn't there. Even if you don't like cigars, somebody you know likes cigars, or you just like to hang out with great grown folk, or you just might want a decent pour, a good pour, good pour. a good pour. You might be a drinker and not a smoker. That's I'm telling you, too. Cosmo Nights, Cosmo Nights Social Club. I'm trying to tell you this bar, what they have available is next level. I'm telling you for real, like. You know, and it's not like we just came with something original. This is something that's trying to bring something to the Midwest. Uh, there's a, there's many cigar weeks and weekends yep. throughout the country, but uh, this is just something we're trying to do our part to make sure the Midwest is represented well. And uh, hey, fool with us. Come get the experience. Come get the experience. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. You just just come fuck with them, okay? Fuck with <laughs> we're grown here. We're grown. Here. Um, yeah. Come, come, come! Fuck with them. The great bar, great selection. Great I think staff. on that note, we gonna exit. We gonna exit. <laughs> Period. I'm sorry. I, I didn't one. know if I could curse or not. Oh, you I, I heard, heard Swahili here, no, so no, I didn't know if I could speak Swahili. You ain't even touched the quota. <laughs> 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 that being said, it's been another one. Thank you again. Make sure you share, like, comment, subscribe. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, MySpace. All that. Man, MySpace pops back up again. Bro. <laughs> make sure you decide. Make sure you connect with him as well on all social media outlets. All right, so what's your, when, when's your next date? Well, I have a date coming up at the Jazz Kitchen at the beginning of October for uh, Donnie Hathaway's birthday weekend. So I'll okay. be doing something on the first Saturday of October at the Jazz Kitchen. Uh, the last Wednesday of the month, I'll be out in Middletown, Indiana at Belgian Horse Winery doing an event. And uh, those are the next couple shows that I have coming up here. So be and on the lookout. Be, be on the lookout. Buy a ticket. Get a ticket. Come come make some memories. And I'm just saying, the birdie just said, I'm ending on this on Thanksgiving weekend. You might want to you might want to holler at us. Yeah, you baby. might want to holler at us Thanksgiving weekend. That being said, it's been another one. Peace. <laughs>